This is the Encouraging People broadcast with Dr. Joe and Heidi Wadlinger. Today's episode, Salvation. Do you really believe? Welcome to Encouraging People. On this episode, we're going to talk about something that seems so simple that everyone thinks they understand, but many really don't. Right. What prompted this is the discussion that I had with a person who was trying to explain the benefits of following Jesus to another person he was ministering to. He said something like, this is not only salvation, it's other stuff too. I know he was trying to make a point, but I wanted to talk about that statement. Technically, it really is only salvation, (laughs) but that's because salvation is so much more than a ticket to heaven. Absolutely. The word salvation, as it's used in the New Testament, is total wholeness of the spirit, body, soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions, and also provision. As Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That word abundant means beyond what's anticipated, exceeding expectation, more than abundant and going past the expected limit. So when someone says it's only salvation, they're really saying it's only everything. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus, through his supreme sacrifice, brought back what Adam lost and fulfilled the covenant that God made with Abraham. The Bible says to be saved, we have to confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. His resurrection confirms that we're able to be reconciled back to our Heavenly Father as his beloved children and spend eternity in his presence. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And that's correct. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says... If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Notice that in those verses, it doesn't talk about doing good works to earn our salvation. No. It is all a gift. All we have to do is believe it, confess it, and receive it. But wait, I can hear people say, all I have to do is believe? Well, I believe in Jesus. But do they really? I contend that most people who believe really don't. Because that word in the scripture has a far greater meaning than our English word believe. So instead of me explaining it to you, I thought we would try something a little different to get the point across. I'm going to ask my avatar to explain it to you. Hey, avatar, would you do that, please? Sure, guys. I will use this chair behind me to give a simple illustration. I'm going to give you two statements concerning this chair. First one, I know that the chair will hold me up. The second one, I believe the chair will hold me up. Which statement do you think is correct in this instance? It's the first one. I know the chair will hold me up because it's a good, strong chair, and I wouldn't have it here in the den if it wasn't. But I don't believe it because as God uses the word believe, You can't believe in a chair standing up. Now I'm believing in the chair. I'm giving myself wholly to it by acting on my knowledge and trusting the chair completely. If a doctor tells you that you have cancer and that if he doesn't operate, you will die, how do you believe in him? Do you believe him by agreeing with his diagnosis? No. You really believe in the doctor when you let him operate when you submit yourself totally to his care, even if you don't understand it. If I were to ask you right now, are you a child of God? 
and experience new birth? What would your answer be? Some people would say, well, I really don't know. If that is their answer, then they're standing beside the chair. They've agreed with the diagnosis, but haven't submitted themselves to the great physician. For when you truly believe, you will know. And because you believe, you'll be able to say with the Apostle Paul, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Believing involves the decision to put God first and to submit your whole life to him because you trust him completely. Back to you guys. Thanks, Avatar. Hey, did I just thank myself? <laughs> I guess so. I think you did. <laughs> so as you can see, believing doesn't just mean mentally acknowledging that Jesus is your Savior, Lord, and Christ, but living your life so that others around you can see that you really do believe that. It's a total commitment to become like Jesus to your world, which totally transforms you and makes you set apart from the world for God's purposes. There is a song we listen to every day, um, and it's called I Speak Jesus. It's sung by Charity Gale, and the lyrics go like this, and please, please, please listen very carefully. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind, because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus because your name is power. <laughs> your name is healing. <laughs> Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Mm. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. I speak mm. Jesus. Yes. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Mm. Wow. So what is that song saying? That we go around and just say Jesus over everyone? Well, not quite. You see, the name Jesus is really not his Hebrew name. His real name was Yeshua, mm -hmm. which comes from Yahashua and would be equivalent to the name Joshua in English. Yeshua in Hebrew means the Lord our salvation. And since we now understand that salvation is total wholeness, we can say that speaking the name Yeshua, or the English name Jesus, means the Lord is your total wholeness. Mm, so good. <laughs> yeah, it is. So when we speak the name of Jesus over someone, we are saying, I speak total wholeness over you. We're speaking a blessing over them by the authority of the Lord God, our Savior. So if we translate the first line of that song, it goes like this. I just want to speak total wholeness over every heart and mind through the authority of the Lord God, our Savior. Brings a new meaning to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So as an exercise, listen to that song and translate it in your mind. You will never listen to it again the same way. So very, very true. Joe and I were an everyday couple whose lives were turned upside down by an incurable disease. Rather than submit to sickness, we sought the Lord. On our journey, we discovered powerful biblical principles to supernaturally reverse the condition. Now we want to help you 
to receive your own healing and walk in victory over every adversity and attack from the enemy of your soul. Through our powerful book, Heal, we can help you apply biblical keys to obtain total wholeness for your spirit, soul, body, and provision. Unlock the power of testimony for building your faith. Fight back against the impossibilities opposing you. Believe for miracles in the lives of others and how to position yourself for your breakthrough today. Discover that you are God's favorite son or daughter. Learn what God had for your life before the world was ever created. Find out how the words which come out of your mouth are supernatural and eternal, and how your words can supernaturally affect your life and the lives of those around you, for good or for evil. With chapters like Training in the Miraculous, Dear, Living His Word, Being Filled with His Spirit, The Power of Testimony, You Shall Be Witnesses, and Testimonies of His Grace, you can learn how to walk like the early disciples did and change your world. Don't miss out on getting our powerful book healed, God's Breakthrough Blueprint for Receiving and Releasing Miracles. You can get it at our website, encouragingpeople.com, or book resellers like Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, christianbooks.com, and many more. So back to what we were saying, if you truly believe and give your life wholly to God and trust in Him completely, you will become mm. like Jesus, mm. who went around doing good and destroying the works of the devil. That is the destiny of every believer, to be like Jesus to their world. But what about works? How do they play into this? It says in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 18, and this is in the uh, New Living Translation. Now, some may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith mm -hmm. if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Now, James isn't saying here that good deeds are required to be saved. Not at all. He's just saying that the only way you can be an effective witness and demonstrate to people that you truly believe is for your actions to confirm that. The good deeds are a result of your faith. Like it says in Matthew 5 verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. As I like to say, we need to focus on being, mm. not doing. The doing will come out of the being. We have been so focused on doing right out of obedience, just mm -hmm. like the Pharisees, that we have forgotten that we're to be doing right mm -hmm. because of love and gratefulness to God for what he has done for us. It's so much easier to do right out of love instead of guilt, fear, or subjugation. Jesus was very clear on that. When the religious leaders asked him, what is the greatest commandment? He said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So we need to love God with our whole being and other people as we do ourselves. All of the things we feel we should do are dependent on those first two things. In other words, we're obedient because we love God and others so much and want to please our loving Heavenly Father. Again, the doing is out of the being. Mm -hmm. Paul confirms this in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
Then he says in Romans 6, 1 through 2, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Once again, because of our love for him, we have died to sin, which means it is no longer in our nature and no longer has rule over us. Our being saved overrules all our wrong. So this whole idea that when we sin, we lose our salvation is not correct. You don't get saved by works. So works don't have a role in losing our salvation. But if we do good works because of our love and gratitude toward God, then it is an indication to others that we really do believe and love God with our very whole being. So what does it mean to work out your salvation then? In Philippians 2.12, in the Amplified Version, it says, So then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation, that is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity mm -hmm. with awe-inspired fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. So just like you go to the gym to work out, that is, to do what it takes every day to stay faithful to your exercise program, so we do what it takes every day to stay faithful to the one who gave us our great salvation. We work out our salvation to continue working towards who we want to be and not discredit the name of Jesus and what he did for us. As it says in Hebrews 2.3, how shall we skate if we neglect so great a salvation? If you neglect your exercise program, then you go backwards. And if you neglect your salvation, you do what used to be called backsliding. And that is where the enemy who goes around like a roaring lion can take you down. All right, so let's summarize this. First, salvation is more than a ticket to heaven. It is a total wholeness of spirit, body, soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions, and also provision, also known as sozo from the Greek. Secondly, salvation comes through believing Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead. Thirdly, believing in Jesus is more than just agreeing. It is putting your total faith and trust in the Lord in everything mm -hmm. with the result that your life confirms it. Think of the chair analogy. Uh, fourthly, the name Jesus means the Lord our salvation, and his name is a confirmation of his authority over everything. Remember, there is no other name above the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, fifthly, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Sixthly, <laughs> if there is such a thing, uh, we need to focus on being so the doing comes naturally. In other words, if you're being who Christ has called you to be, then these uh, doings come as a natural uh, result of being. So, so be. <laughs> Seven. Sin is not how we lose our salvation, but it is an indicator that we are not truly changed by the love of God and what he did for us. Eight, we need to continue to work out our salvation every moment of every day by remembering who God created us to be and working toward that. So, I want to challenge you and ask, 
Do you really believe? Does your life show that to others? Is your goal in life to love God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and others as yourself? How much time do you spend talking to God? When you do, what do you talk about? When you meet others and start a conversation, is it about worldly things or about the God who loves you and gives you abundant life? Take an inventory. Ask those who are close to you if they see Jesus in your life. If someone would follow your example, would it bring them closer to faith in God or make them walk away from him? I had asked myself those questions many years ago, and I didn't like the answers. I still ask those questions today, and I'm getting better. So even if you have been a Christian for a long time, please with, be honest with yourself. Right now, Joe and I would like to give you an opportunity to declare to whom you belong. I believe that for some of you, this was a revelation or an epiphany. And with this new understanding of who Jesus is and why he came, you now desire to make your relationship with your Heavenly Father right. Like David did when he said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression, and my sin is always before me. It would be such a great privilege if you would join me in prayer. Pray this prayer out loud after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I have broken your laws and am a sinner. I understand that my sin has separated me from you. I am sorry and ask you to forgive me, wash me clean. I accept the fact that your son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins and rose again on the third day for my victory and is alive today. And here's my prayers. I now open my heart's door and invite Jesus in to become my Lord and my Savior. I give him control and ask that he would rule and reign in my life so that his perfect will would be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We want to pray for you right now. Father, we come before you in humility. I ask that the words we have spoken today resonate with the hearts of people who are hearing them. Please let them individually hear what you want them to hear as you speak to their hearts. Holy Spirit, we ask you to guide us into all truth and expose where we have fallen short in truly believing in Jesus. The belief that is not just knowing about Jesus, but knowing him personally and trusting him for and in everything, even if we don't feel it. 
We ask that you speak to the hearts of these people and let them know how much you love them as your children and have great plans for every one of them. Speak to them when they least expect it. Let them have dreams and visions and words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Let them see you in every aspect of their lives and be thankful that you have saved them to give them abundant life. Lord, bless them and keep them and let your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. Shalom, shalom, nothing lacking, nothing broken. In the name of Jesus, amen and, and amen. amen. This channel was created for you. It is important to us that we are speaking about things that you need to hear. So please go to our website at encouragingpeople.com and click on our Contact Us page to let us know how we can help and encourage you. And as always, remember, you, you are, are God's favorite. favorite. Hey folks, I'm Joe Zavatar, and I would like to ask all of you that have listened so far for a big favor. I would like to keep my job, but Joe and Heidi are not going to let me if this animation format isn't something that you like and helps you to stay engaged with the topic. So I really would appreciate it if you would go to the encouragingpeople.com website and go to the contacts page and let them know what you think about me and the part I could play here on the videos. I'm hoping you give me a big thumbs up so I can come back. Hoping to see you soon. Be blessed and highly favored in the name of Jesus. You've been watching the Encouraging People broadcast with Dr. Joe and Heidi Wadlinger. Thank you for joining us today. Encouraging People was created for you. We have a mission to bring the true good news of the kingdom of God to as many people as we can by the grace of God and help them to find and fulfill their destiny and purpose. If you like this broadcast, you can find more of these videos at our website, encouragingpeople.com, or on YouTube or Rumble. We also have a podcast that airs on many major podcasting sites. We would love to hear from you. You can contact us from the contacts page on our website and also subscribe to our upcoming newsletter. Since we are here for you, we would ask if you would let us know how we can help. Use that same Contact Us page and let us know how you are enjoying the broadcast and any questions or suggestions you might have. Also, don't forget to get a copy of our book Healed, God's Breakthrough Blueprint for Receiving and Releasing Miracles. You can order it at our website store or any major book publisher. We run specials all the time, so come to our website often to check those out. Be blessed and highly favored in the name of Jesus. And always remember, you are God's favorite.